hello congratulations for reaching module 10 okay so this is the first activity in module 10 so hopefully it will assist you in making sense of all the work that is there okay so this is activity 10.1 okay so we're still on partnerships but now you're focusing on the statement of comprehensive income specifically okay so i understand that um here the requirements we have um not just the income statement but we have like the capital account the current account and extra um questions but we're just going to focus specifically on the statement of comprehensive income for this question okay so here they're saying the information was extracted from the records of jj stores on the 28th of february 2020 the end of the current financial year and then they're saying the partners are Miss Josie and Mr. J. Okay, required information. They're saying in 10.1.1, I prepared the statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 28 February 2020. And they're saying, note, some amounts are provided in the workbook. Show all workings in brackets. So this is for how many marks? It's for 35 marks. Okay. So this is you now sitting in your June exam. Okay, so things to note before you even start a question, very important things, is to always make sure that like you do what? You highlight um, the year end. You get it? So here they're saying prepare the uh, statement of comprehensive income for the year ended 28 February 2020 very important to do what to highlight the date so if they're saying the year is ending on the 28th of february 2020 my next question is then when did this financial year begin so that's the question that you have to ask yourself so before you even start doing anything else so you know that oh so the year ends on the 28th of february so there's a good chance that it might have began in the previous year right on which date so this is my timeline usually i used to do that like before i even start the questions and whatever i draw the timeline so that it assists me for all the questions because there's no way that you will finish accounting without having to like draw back to the timeline and understand because most of the questions especially when they're asking you about things such as accrued income or income received in advance they will ask you they will actually force you to do what to come up with the timeline and try to understand the months better so if the year ends on the 28th of february it means what it means that it began on the 1st of march 2019 so if you calculate these months from the 1st of March 2019 to the 28th of February 2020, that's uh, equals to a 12 months period. Okay, so I hope that was clear enough. So now let's go back to the income statement. Okay, so that one is out and then they're saying very important information. Some amounts are provided in the workbook show all workings in brackets you get it very very important so if i get something like this definitely i want to see what the income statement what they mean when they're saying some amounts have been included oh and i can see here they have already put what there's commission income the salaries and wages there's depreciation um already included there so it means what it means that there's a possibility that my question will be slightly a bit more easier but you never know okay let's continue so here now we have to do what we have to start with our income statement so we are given information here which is what the extracts from the financial records obviously and then since it's a partnership they've given us like uh things such as the capitals for both partners current accounts for both partners and then there's what we have like sales here we have what we have cost of sales which are what um things that are necessary for us in preparing the income statement okay and then there's what this uh extract b which is like the pre adjustment amount from general ledgers on the 28th of february so this is at the end of that 12 month period this is what everything looked like you get it 
So this is what, these are the amounts before they had to take into account adjustments. So it's a pre-adjustment trial balance. And then these are what, these are the adjustments, all those things we have to take into account to fix that so that we have what we are applying, what the matching principle. Okay, so let's start with our income statement. So it starts with what? It starts with the sales. Usually, I always start my sales by just opening a bracket there and then putting in the sales just in case there, may, there might be debtors allowances that I have to take into account. Okay, so sales here, we are told that the sales is 998,400. So I'll put in 998,400. And then now I have to look for debtors allowances. Do they have any debtors allowances here? Okay, I am looking at my extra. I'm not seeing any debtors allowances. I am looking at my extra of pre-adjustment um, uh, trial balance general ledger, and I'm not seeing anything to do with debtors allowances. I can see there is debtors control as well as provision for bad debt, but other than that, I'm not seeing anything else. Okay, so it means what? It means that there's nothing for me to adjust when it comes to sales. So I'll just take that amount as it is and put it there on the final uh, section. Okay, so the next thing is what is the cost of sales? So don't forget this part that I'm doing in your T accounts. Usually this is what? This is usually the, what is it? It's usually your trading account. The trading account has what? It has the sales and it has the cost of sales. So this is that situation. Okay, so we are looking for the cost of sales. How much is the cost of sales? Okay, so the cost of sales is 665,600. Okay, so 665,600. Obviously it must be what? It must be in brackets because we're saying we have to do what? We have to minus it out of what? The sales. So if I minus the two, um, you are welcome to pause the video and calculate yourself because just watching a video and not doing it as well, it doesn't make it more exciting. Okay, so I am getting 332,800. Okay, so we are done with what the first part of it. So this is the trading account side of things. So now we are going to what to the profit and loss side of things. So in the statement of comprehensive income, the 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 the, the what is it the profit and loss side of things, it's usually obviously we are focusing on anything to do with the operations of the business. Right. So is there any income that we're receiving while we are operating this business? So now we have to take care of it. So now we can see here this what this commission income. Okay, let's see if we have any other income that we need to take into account. So this side I'm looking and I'm not seeing anything to do with income except for what? Oh, this is interesting. We are given what? The net profit as per the profit and loss account. You get it. So they've already given us the final answer that we must get. You get it. So since the answer is there, I'm just going to take this amount and put it in my income statement. But my question to you is, they're saying this is what? This is net profit as per the profit and loss account. So in this thing, where do you think that amount will go? On your income statement, where do you think that uh, 311,013 will go here? Yes, it will go in your net profit for the year. So this becomes what? 311113. One, one, so now we have what? We have that very important figure, the balancing figure here. Um, what we had to like initially most of the time have to calculate. But now they've given us it. So it makes what? It makes our work easier. But I'm pretty sure we might have to work backward to get some figures which is even more exciting. That's why I love accounting. Okay, let's continue. We're looking for an, an additional income. Okay, so I am looking for an additional income here. So here I look and there is what? This rent income. Okay, so with the rent income here, there's probably something. So I'm just going to take that amount, um, rent income.
and then I'm opening my brackets that was one one seven two hundred and fifty so now I have to find out if there's any additional information about the rent income okay so the rent income now I'm looking for additional information here and then I oh there is additional information about the rent income here they're saying the rent for March okay let me do this so it's important to do this as well in your question paper so that you know that I've taken care of this transaction I am done with this transaction okay so here they're saying the rent for March 2020 was received and deposited okay and then they're saying take into account that the rent was increased by seven eight hundred and seventy five thousand from the first of December 2019 okay I'm gonna take this because like rent income is very important and many students battle with this even in grade 12 so hopefully it's not gonna be uh, us who are battling with rent income but to be will be able to understand and make sense of it because it's very 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 important to understand it okay so remember I said that it's crucial for you to do what to come up with the timeline earlier so that like your work will become a lot more easier as you continue okay so now we have what we have the uh, timeline we say that it ends the year ends on the 28th of February 2020 which means that it would have been it would have began on the previous year which was the first of March 2019 so here they're telling us that the rent for March 2020 was received and deposited already I am seeing what I am seeing something that is not supposed to be for this year right so remember our year ends or when it ends on the 28th of February you get it so this is what this is a prepaid yeah I know you will say prepaid like but this is more like an income received in advance you get it we receive more for this financial year than we should have you get it so it's what we received it in advance so this is an additional month so this is March 2020 which makes it what income received in advance advanced income is up to you but it's income received in advance I'll just write AD for time okay so we have an income received in advance so they're also telling us additional information that they're saying the rent amount was increased right and it was increased on the first of Ma of, 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 of December the previous year yeah so now we have to work out like how many months was the increase effective in the business okay so if I'm starting to count from December so this will be December the 1st of December 2019 and then the current next year obviously then it becomes what the 1st of January 2020 and then the increase was there here all as well or like the financial year end and then here as well so my question now is like how many months was the increase in so we have december we have january we have february we have march so that is four months where we had like the increase so obviously then i'll have to do what i'll say 875 right multiplied by how many months multiplied by four months if you do that with your calculator what are you getting okay I am getting 3,500 okay so this is the increase right so the next question is we know that the amount obviously the one that we have been given that the total amount for rent income is how much so I'm going back to my trial balance and I realized that actually rent income here yeah, it's hundred and seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty okay so hundred and seventeen thousand two hundred and fifty is the full amount for rent income right so I'll have to do what I'll then say okay so now I want the full or okay 
so since we have um, um, the amount obviously which is like the full amount of the rent we have to do what we have to minus what the increase of the last four months because there's a good chance that that amount obviously it's what is included it's part of this amount so now we want what we want the raw original amount so we'll say what we'll say this minus three thousand five hundred and if you minus that with three thousand five hundred what are you getting so you i'm assuming you have your calculator in front of you so you pause the video and you work out how much you're getting then okay on my side i am getting um hundred and thirteen thousand um seven hundred and fifty okay so this is the amount now like if there was no increase this would have been what the rent amount i don't know if it makes sense so again now we have this amount we have to do what we have to figure out like for how many months was this amount for so we know that the accounting period is equals to what it must always be equals to 12 months right but in this instance they're saying rent for march 2020 was received and deposited so does much has anything to do with this accounting period of 12 months no right so it means what it means that like we said this is what is an income received in advance for how many months so there is what there is an additional amount there's an yeah there's an additional amount or additional month in this so this is for how many months this is for 12 like 13 months instead of 12 so we have to do what we have to figure out how how like how much was it per month so that we have to take out the additional month that has been included in what in this amount okay so how are we going to do that so now we have what you have hundred and thirteen thousand seven hundred and fifty right and then we have to do what we have to divide it by 13 months this will help us figure out how much is rent per month before any increase okay so divide that by 13 on your own calculator and then we'll take it from there okay on my side i am getting eight thousand seven hundred and fifty so this is what this is the rent per month before any increase okay so now how will this look like in my income statement remember we said what this amount represents what it represents the additional month like okay it, 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 it like it, it um has to do with what it has to do with like this is what how much is paid per month before increase but the most important thing as well is to note that like the rent for March 2020, it was after the increase, right? So now we have to find out why, how much is what the rent, the actual rent amount with increase included. So we have to say what? We have to include the, the, the increase by putting in what? The 875 into what? The amount of rent that we calculated before increase. Okay. So you add those two together and let me know what you're getting. Okay, I am getting 9,625. Okay, so this is what, this is, this was more like the new rent amount per month from the 1st of December, 2019. So this is what they were now paying so basically we're saying the 8750 was the amount that they were paying before there was any increase but from the 1st of december 2019 they were now paying how much they're now paying 9625 okay so now we have how much is rent per month after the increase so how will this look like in your income statement okay let's go back to the income statement and see Okay, so this is rent income here, 
Right. And then obviously, because it's an income that we receive in advance, you're right, and it has nothing to do with this current accounting period, we have to take it out. So how are we taking it out? We'll say minus 9,626, which is the additional month that has been included there. Right. And then if you minus the two, as I'm saying, you take your calculator, you work it out yourself. That's the fun of accounting. If you do it, then it makes more sense than like, just watching and listening. Okay. So I am getting 107625. So this is the new rent amount that we are getting. Okay, so let's see if there's any other additional incomes that we need to take care of. Okay, I'm not sure between um, trading stock deficit and trading stock surplus as well as because those are other things that are most likely to be in income you get it it depends on the calculation so i want us to calculate the trading stock deficit or trading stock surplus to see whether is it a deficit or is it um what is it is it a surplus okay i'm gonna increase my font here okay so trading stock because sometimes it can be a deficit, sometimes it can be a surplus. So it's important for us to calculate it right away so that we know where we put it. It's the same thing as what as bad like provision for bad debt. Always advise to calculate those two first so that you know where you put them. Okay, let's see. So the information here, I'm assuming, let me see if there's trading stock here. So here they've given us trading stock of 134,840. And then here they're saying the annual stock take revealed the following stock on hand. Uh, trading stock of 130,540. Okay. So this means what? We have two different things, right? It's still trading stock, but like uh, approaching them, it's different. So the figure that we have in the pre-adjusted trial balance is what in our books, you get it? It's what the paper uh, amount of trading stock. And this one is what is the actual physical stock that is in the store. I always say, picture this as like the, your tax shop, for example. How much of stock do you have in your tax shop versus how much you have in your books in the tax shop you get it it's always not going to be the same but it should be the same so here the question is we have more in our books than we have in the the, the tax shop so is it a surplus is it a deficit obviously it's, it's, it's a deficit because like it seems like in our books we recorded more but the actual one the one that we can see we can physically see and sell is less than what's in the books you get it so we made a loss here so now we have to do what we have to record the two you get it so that's how it actually helps you out so here you will say obviously it's like books books minus physical it will help you see whether is it a surplus is it a deficit i'm not going to do the calculation here i'm just going to um see if we can put the calculation here so it's a deficit it helps us out um knowing sooner so the amounts are one three four Mm, one three four eight forty minus one three zero five forty okay so if you minus those two you should be able to get uh four thousand three hundred okay so we're able to wind like weed out these things let's look at the second one so the second one now we're focusing on the provisions. Okay, so provision for bed that they're saying, um, this is number two, they're saying adjust the provision for bed debts to 5% of the net trade debtors. Okay, very important. So here they've given us debtors control of 68,720, right? And then they've given us here as well, 
how much it's like the provision of bad debt so this date is what the first of march 2019 so i'm assuming this was in the beginning of the accounting period very important okay so we have 68 uh 720 and we don't know whether this was a surplus or this was like goes in our income or goes in our expenses okay so uh let me put on provisions we have how much day we have that is that is of 68,720 and they're saying we're provisioning we are estimating that out of these debtors five percent of them will not be able to pay back what they're owing us that's provision basically out of all the ones that they're owing us five percent of them will not be able to pay you get it so now we're saying 68,000 uh times 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 and you should be able to get how much are you getting on your side okay i am getting uh three thousand four hundred and thirty six so this is what i'm getting okay so so this year we are estimating that three thousand uh four hundred and thirty six is going to we are most likely not to get it so the question is how much was provisioned in the previous year we realized that in the previous year the provision three thousand nine hundred and sixty and thirty six you get it so it's way less than what we provisioned for this year you get it so think of it as like the same logic that i was applying for trading stock deficit trading stock deficit i was like okay what's in the books what's in the books here i am saying it's what it's three nine um three six right the reality is how much the reality is three four three six you get it so basically it means what um it went down previously it was three nine three six currently it's what it's three four three six you get it so it went down by how much by 500 so this is a good thing for the business you get it so it means what it means that like our estimations for people who are not likely to pay back have went down you get it so we're most likely to get more money than in the previous year so provisions for bad debt adjustment it's a good thing right so we work out obviously very important to put their workings in your brackets you will put in all those workings even the multiplying uh by the percentage and all of that because the more you show the better are your chances of getting more marks okay then i am getting how much 500 okay so that's it my incomes are complete add all these incomes and put in the total amount there okay my incomes total incomes i'm getting one five five eight fifty okay so now we are done with our incomes we should be able to continue with our expenses okay which other expenses have we haven't taken care of okay i know we've taken care of provisions for bad debt as well as um let me see okay we've taken care of the trading stock deficit we need to take care of packaging material now so packaging material obviously they're saying what do we have been given this amount here and then at the end of the year this was not used you get it so we have to minus the one that has not been used okay from the total packaging material so 23,100 minus 3,600 okay so packaging so packaging material is 31,000 
3,600. Okay, and if you minus the two, you should be able to get um, 19,500. Okay, let's look at what else is left for us to fill in here. Okay, so I've taken care of packaging material. I've taken care of the adjustments um, for unused packaging material. Obviously, that was one. So now we need to take care of what? Insurance. So they're saying here, insurance includes the annual policy for 5,820 paid on the 1st of June, 2019. Okay, so this one, it's very interesting. They're just telling us that like, out of the money that has been um, taken into account for insurance, there is a portion of it that has to do with what? Um, okay, let me just put it here. So this amount, um, is more or less um so if okay 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 let's start over so if we're saying um this insurance amount um was paid on the first of june and this amount is said to be what an annual figure annual figure so they're saying uh this amount is for a full period of 12 months you get it and it's already included in the amount that is in the pre-adjusted trial balance you get it it's what it's an annual policy you get it so the question is how would we um work it out basically you get it so let's okay Okay, I'm back. Okay, so how would we work it out? Okay, so to work it out, obviously, we have to calculate how many months are left out of this amount. Um, you agree with me that, like, if they're saying this amount was, like, from the... I wonder why my brush is not working. Like, I keep trying to make it right, but it's not writing. Okay, so now it's working okay so if this thing was from the first of june so my timeline again the first of june here right so calculate now from the first of june until the 28th of february 2020 how many months are there okay so we're saying june july august september october november december january february i'm getting nine months so you agree with me that out of this policy we have managed to do what to utilize nine months of it right which kind of means that um there is what there's a portion of this amount that is prepaid that has to do with march april may right which is like the remaining months in the 12 months of this amount right so the extra months are three okay so we have to do what we have to minus the extra months so how are we minusing the extra three months we would have to um okay i'm gonna go back to my working we would have to say um how much is the full amount how much is it's five thousand um eight hundred and twenty so insurance five eight two zero right and then divided by 12 months we want to find out how much is it per month right so <clears throat> dividing it by 12 how much are you getting so i'll say five thousand eight hundred and twenty divided by 12 so i'm getting that oh so per month is actually how much is actually four hundred and eighty five right so if i multiply this by three months the extra months that are not supposed to be there i should be able to get um one thousand four hundred and fifty five 
So these are the months that should not be there, which kind of means that now I have to say the total premium of like the insurance, the one that is in the pre-adjusted trial balance, let me see insurance, 21,455. Okay, 21,455 minus uh, 1,455. If you minus those two, you should be able to get a full 20,000. Okay, so we've taken care of insurance. Uh, let's see what else is left over. So insurance has been taken care of. The next thing is water and electricity. Okay, so water and electricity, they're saying water and electricity account for February 2020 was not yet paid, 2150 So this is more what an accrued expense, because we're saying it's an expense that should have been paid but has not yet been paid. How much is the full amount? Here we have 25320 Okay, water and electricity. So twenty one thousand oh twenty five thousand three twenty twenty five thousand three twenty minus two thousand one hundred and fifty. If you minus these two, you should be able to get twenty seven. Oh, sorry, it should have been added because it's an accrued. Accrued means what? It should have been paid. But has not yet been paid so we will assume it has been paid because of what the matching principle okay and then we say twenty seven thousand four seventy this is what the full figure that should have been for this year okay so we've taken care of all of them let's double check if we really have taken care of all of the amounts that need to be taken care of so we have taken care of this one here okay so we'll not take care of what the interest on fixed deposit there because or what or the interest on um what is it interest on loan because those ones they will take care of them below down there okay so these are the amounts that we have now here um yeah we've taken care of everything obviously the sundry expenses we are not given there which means what it is a balancing figure so we will have to work back what from down there to get what the balancing figure okay so now we should be able to work backward from here so you know that after getting your operating profit you should be able to get what interest income interest income so how much is the interest income for this year so i know that we have an amount in the pre-adjusted trial balance and they are saying here uh let's see this they've given us interest income here which is eight thousand one hundred okay is there anything that we need to take care of oh there is something to take care of it and here they're saying uh interest on fixed deposit is not capitalized Okay, and then they're saying interest for the last quarter of this financial year has not yet been received. Okay, so since it has not yet been received, we have to go back and figure out how much is the total fixed deposit. So here I'm finding fixed deposit from Bok Bank at 9% per annum. And it's actually for how much? 120,000. Okay, so i am on interest on capital so here i will have to say hundred and twenty thousand obviously multiplied by uh how many percent it's nine over hundred then multiplied by three months over 12. this is a quarter right how many quarters are there in a year we have four quarters okay so this quarter is more like a 10. Okay, so if you work this one out, you should be able to get um, 2,700. Okay, and then that 2,700, you will add it with what was already there. Remember, this acts as an accrued expense because they're saying it has not yet been received. It should have been received, but it has not yet been received. So it's like an accrued income. You get it? Okay, so if you add this two together, you should be able to get 10,800. 
So this is what it looks like. So now we have what? We have our interest income. Let's see if we can get our interest expense. Okay, interest expense. Okay, so with our interest expense here, we are told that um, the saying interest on the loan is capitalized. Okay, I like that. And they're saying the loan statement received from Kudu Bank showed the following. So this is the loan statement that we got from Kudu Bank. Okay, the saying we had what we had is the loan balance on the 1st of March 2019. And then there was what? There was a repayment for the year, including interest. So we paid. So basically we opened with that amount. 374 and then during the year we decided to pay back some of that amount and that amount that we paid included interest in it so it's tricky because the interest is capitalized which means that interest is included in what in the payment type okay and then we are not told how much is the interest that was capitalized during the year right but we are told that at the end of the year the balance of the loan account was 327,000. Okay, so how would you get the interest? Obviously, you would just say what the opening balance minus all this two, and you'll be able to get like how much is what that difference there. So 374,600 minus what was paid during the year, which is 86,000. 400 minus the closing balance of 327,000. If you minus all this three, you will get an interest expense of 38,800. Okay, so this means what? It means that now we have what? We have all the amounts that we need to work out what? To work out like working backward. So how would you get the profit before interest expense? I'm sure you're asking yourself. So if you're working backward, you have to say what? You say the net profit for the year plus what? The interest expense. And then you will get the amount there at the top. So you're more than welcome to post the video and calculate how much you're getting. I am getting 349.933 which means what this is my profit before we had taken into account the interest expenses for the year okay so now i am working backward again and i'm looking for the operating profit since i'm looking for the operating profit i'll have to do what i'll have to minus the interest income because if we had to work like a normal world we had to add it so if it was added previously now you have to minus it if you minus this one and this one what are you getting you pause the video and you work it out yourself okay i am getting three nine nine one three three okay so this is what this is our um operating profit okay so we have an operating profit now it means what with an operating profit we should be able to do what we should be able to get um okay we didn't do this one here so to get the gross operating income obviously you have to add gross income and other operating income so you're adding these two together and i am getting four eight eight six fifty okay so now we have what we have uh the gross operating we should be able to get what how much were the expenses so total operating expenses how much we will be able to work it out by saying what by saying um total gross so gross operating income minus operating uh profit so minus this two you will get what you get your total operating expenses pause the video and work it out yourself I am getting one five five eight fifty. Okay, so what this amount now it means what it means that it should be easy to find out what to find out the missing number here, the balancing figure here. 
So the balancing figure, how would you get the balancing figure? You would take your total operating expenses, right? That 155850 and minus everything here. And that 